What's up, y'all? Kofi Kingston here, and I would love to have a drink with wrestling on the rocks, depending on what that drink is, preferably non-alcoholic, you know? How's it going? I'm Kofi Warrior James. Soda. I would love to have a drink with wrestling on the rocks. Maple syrup. Never have a drink with wrestling on the rocks. Welcome to the dive bar of the IWC. Welcome to episode one again. I'm at Ref Marsh. We are at WOTR the show, and with me today, a little change of pace, a little call back from the past, back to the future. What's every going other thing. On, Ref? <laughs> we got yeah, shakes. Yeah, man. How y'all What's doing, up? wrestling world? What's going on, man? It's good yeah. to be back. It's been a minute. It's been a hot minute since we've had you on here. Yeah, football season, right? Yeah, football season. I Do you, over the Shakes, what's the podcast? How do you find it? Uh, Shakedown Media Network on YouTube. Please like and subscribe. Yeah. Do you guys cover baseball too? Not really, but we do have um, a couple of hosts that uh cover it and, and watch it and talk about it here and there but we don't really chat about it all right but when the time comes down to world series you guys like keep up on it kind of a deal yeah a lot of us yankee fans yeah so um, um houston we're not really rocking with houston right now not even having it yeah uh, i'm a big san diego padres fan so i thought this was our year i was like no we're, we're gonna do it and then uh then we got he's kicked kicked right the hell out so yeah, I was just wondering. I was just wondering how you guys do it over there. Just in time over there in the chat says, Cheers, my friends, and welcome back, Shakes. Hey, man. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, what, are you, what are you drinking? What do you got over there? What's on the rocks over there? You already know me. <laughs> you, need, you didn't even get a water bottle? You're going to get all parched and stuff? Mm-mm. <laughs> I left my damn weed over there, too. <laughs> 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 so you're gonna need a intermission at some point, right? And go. Yeah, you already know me. You know yeah, me. Yeah. Uh, I'm having a little Sonic Cherry Limeade with uh, vodka. Cheers. Really good. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Uh, yeah. Uh, shakes. It's been a while. It's been since I think pre SummerSlam. I remember correctly because because uh, all the stuff going oh, on. So I wanted. When I knew I had the free the free weekend or the free Wednesday, lately Bishop from Terrible Wrestling Takes has been kicking in and hanging okay. out because he's been getting that bug to talk about wrestling again. <laughs> uh, okay. Kevlar's been out because of uh, he went. Uh, I want to say it was like quail hunting or something. Like he goes camping wow. a lot and he's moving his house, and so there's been a lot of stuff coming up for him. So he's been out, and I saw I had a free. Uh, yeah, shout out to Kev. And I saw that we had a free Wednesday, and I thought, you know what? It'd be really cool to find out what Shakes has been thinking of everything since since Triple H took over, because I don't know that that had officially really happened before before we've talked last. Yeah. I did. So, oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's a true question for me, huh? Yeah, what do you um, think no, in uh, general, generally speaking? Okay. Before right. we get into all uh, the specifics. What he's been doing, right? What he's been doing, not what I feel about him being in charge now, right? Oh, yeah, not, um, nothing with him being, unless you have some sort of, like, crazy heat with Triple H or something, but just in general, the product feeling, how it's been I'm a Triple different. H fan. I'm a yeah. Triple H fan. You already know her authority and everything. That was one of my favorite groups, so. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Mm, you know me, man. I like my my uh, heels, man. I like the heels. <laughs> but uh, I like it. You know, um, it's a lot of things that he's coming up with that um, it's like must see. Yeah. You know, as far as like um, Brock Lesnar and um, Bobby Lashley, yeah, like no. that's that's a must see right there. You don't even need no belt to watch that one. Yeah. Right. Um and then uh I was definitely like what what's going on with um Omos and uh and um my man Braun Strowman, right? So yeah. I definitely wanted to see that and 
presenting that to us. It's a lot of matches that um, it's just been like, okay, yeah, I, I wonder what would happen in that match. And he's giving it to us. And, of course, I know we already seen Bobby Lashley and, and, and Brock, but, I mean, let think about it, though. We all been watching wrestling for a long time. Knowing Brock Lesnar, we really going to think that Brock Lesnar is going to go out like that? Like, he just going to lose to Bobby Lashley one time and let that slide? Nah, man, this is this is King Kong versus Godzilla, baby. What are you yeah. talking about? Yeah, it's it's really cool too. Just like so, like you said, we saw it once before at Rumble, but the Bobby Lashley Brock Lesnar match was a second thought to the actual story, which was Brock and Roman. You know, they cheated Brock out of the title with Roman interfering, I believe, with the chair, if I remember correctly. Like they. Or was it with the title? Either way, he got involved. This now they built it up to be specifically personal animosity between Brock and Bobby. This feels like there's a spotlight on it. There's a focus on it. This is the build that we should have gotten before. You know what I mean? Like this is, it feels like Triple H is trying to redo a bunch of stuff that he thinks could have been done differently or better. Do you get that impression? Like in general? Mm-hmm. It's the impression no, I get I with totally a lot of his agree. NXT guys. You know, it feels like he's trying to rehash him. Mm-hmm. Like, um, everything. Like when you look at um, Hit Row. When you mm-hmm. look at um, Bray. He even he even brought back uh, Emma. Emma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brought back Emma. Yeah. So overall. It's been really cool. I agree with you that there's been a lot of stuff he's putting out there that feels really must-see. But I also feel like on the flip side, with Triple H, it's either like must-see or hard to watch. Like the stuff I don't like, I miss. really don't like. Hit or miss. Yeah. It's a full-on home run or a strikeout. It's like, can't you just do a couple like a couple grand Walmart. hits? <laughs> yeah, get a few Those people singles. on base. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, everything is massive or sucked. You know what I mean? Like, it's weird. Like, where before it was always like, oh, yeah, this isn't as exciting as that, but it doesn't need to be. It's in the middle. Or like, oh, yeah, I'm kind of invested in this. More curious how the match is going to be. This is really like, I'm like either super invested and think it's amazing, or I just want it to go away or want nothing to do with it. You know what I mean? Like, there's no passively interested anymore. Yep. Pretty <laughs> much, man. Home run or strikeout. <laughs> All right. I'm going to put over real quick over on the top of the show. Uh, I've been working over with Medusa over on Paving the Way podcast. So check out her YouTube.com slash Queen of Carnage for all that. Subscribe. I'm working with John Arezzi over at Pro Wrestling Spotlight. His YouTube.com Pro Wrestling Spotlight. Give that a follow as well. You support them. It supports me. It's a good cause. It helps out. I didn't even bring it over here. I meant to. But with all that came Curable down here on the bottom. If you go to Curable.com, that's K-U-R-I-B-L.com. Got premium CBD. They got Delta 8, Delta 9 products. Really easy to get behind this this company. I met the owner when I was in Vegas at Cauliflower Alley Club. Really cool guy. I've used a lot of different CBDs working in a cigar shop and a smoke shop. And this is an this is easy like this one is so good and the way that they they the way they parse out the milligrams i like more than a lot of the other brands the way that they do it uh, especially when it comes to like the delta 8 and delta 9 they they parse this out in five milligram uh doses where most of the other ones are starting like 30 40 which can be a lot for someone to take all at once right uh, especially for a lot of us lightweights that just want it for bed you know we don't need to get like ripped <laughs> you know so um, but yeah, if you go there to curable.com and use promo code mad, thanks, you can get 20% off an order there and, uh, try it out. Uh, you have to look at the Delta products. It doesn't ship everywhere because that's the nature of the Delta stuff. So CBD does ship everywhere. The other stuff you have to check by state to see if you, if you are able to get mail from them. So just want to throw that out there. They haven't given me a read yet or anything, but they are a sponsor now. So I'm just going to check it out when I can until I get like 
something that they want me to say. Otherwise, I'm just going to say what I feel like. <laughs> Shout out to you having a sponsor. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, dude, so Crown Jewel's coming up. Let's talk... I'm trying to think if there was news specific that we need to do. Oh, a real quick shout out. It is November, and November happens to be... I want to get the verbiage right. National Veterans and Military Families Month. So, uh, cheers to all the veterans and military families. Uh, we're going to talk more about that as the month goes on. But that is that is November. Uh, we are a veteran family in and of ourselves. Producer Lady's a veteran. My grandfather veteran uh before he passed so definitely a lot of military in my family so always want to give a shout out to when we can to them and their families so what it's the military deal stateless mortis i believe today is the day of the dead shouts to thunder rosa what the fuck is they doing upstairs huh mm -hmm. are you getting yelled at Nah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let's talk. A whole bunch of craziness. Well, let's talk some SmackDown stuff. I want to talk some general storylines. Uh, I haven't talked to you about it in a while, but I have a feeling. I have a hunch. I know a little bit how you feel about it. Sami Zayn joined the Bloodline. Mm -hmm. Honorary Oos himself. What have you been thinking about the bloodline, Sami Zayn, Honorary Oos, the tensions with Jay? This past SmackDown, Jay could not hold it together. Roman was like, no, no, you look right into the camera. You could see Jay just shaking with laughter as Sami says he's not feeling very Oosy. Yeah. They even postulated calling Sami, Sami Uso. I'm on board for all of this. What do you think about the bloodline? Sammy Uso. <laughs> all right all right shakes just put me on hold right as i pitch to him <laughs> take a drink i'm gonna send this link to justin i think um yeah uh jay uso i do wonder this about the the concept of uh, uh, Jay breaking Roman trying to get it back together the kind of weird abrupt ending to Paul Heyman just saying making it into a commercial for Crown Jewel which is all a commercial for Crown Jewel right but I do wonder if part of it was like an audible like hey everyone's cracking up and this was supposed to be a little bit more serious and at some point they're like well the message got across we're just gonna move on you know what I mean well alright so I remember like the last time I was here we was talking about how cool it was well one of the last few times I was here and we was talking about how cool it was that he was there and you know they all serious and He's in the background dancing, and it actually came to fruition, him doing that. And, you know, he is the the light side of the group, so it, it, it keeps them interesting, and it really brings a lot of their characters out. Mm -hmm. So I love the same thing, thing, and I'm loving that not only – like um, the crowd is backing that up or, you know, yes. the organization is backing that up, right? It's like everybody is, is with it. But really to have the head of the table, Roman Reigns, like lobby and back it up too. Like he signs off on it. He's lobbying and then he's interacting with him. Like he's all into it with it. And, for him to receive and accept him into the, the, the group and into the whole faction, that's what makes it really go because he could easily say, okay, like he could play the J role, like, bro, you're not family. Get the fuck out of here, right? Like, what are you doing here, right? But no, instead, he's like, ah, uh, you know what? You're doing a great job, man. You're doing good and, and good deeds, so I'm going to reward you. And, and and he keeps rewarding them, and, and the more he rewards them, 
the more responsibility he uh, gets, and and it's just all funny. It is all great. I love the banter, and then coming all the way around to the last um, thing, right? Because I know that's what you mentioned. Um, when Jay said that, right? When um, you know, I, I and this was this was great. This was great because it was like the the guardian came through. Mm-hmm. And was like mad at the children. The children was acting up, and the yeah. guardian comes through, right? And he says, "Okay, we got a problem here. We're gonna fix it between y'all two. Let's let's solve it right now, right?" Yeah. And then to have Sammy take the high road, right, and be like, "You know what? Yeah, I'm right. sorry, right. man. I'm sorry. Whatever I did, man. Whatever I did, I don't know what happened. I don't care. I'm sorry. Took the high road." Yeah. And Jay say. Get that out of my face! <laughs> yeah, yeah. So right. you know, it, and and that was that was even gold because it was like, all right, it could have been great for Jay to just be like, all right, you know what, I accept it, and then this, you know, hunky dory, everybody rides off in the sunset. But no, he's still against it. So it may, <laughs> which he messes up, and Sammy's like, man, Roman says for to make peace, and he's like, I don't give a. <laughs> what Roman says, oh man, now you're in trouble. Oh. <laughs> now, now we, now we got Sam Uso out. You know what I mean, and, and I love that name. Like it was it, that, that was like wow on the fly. I was like, that was good, Roman. <laughs> Sammy Uso, why yeah. not? So good, yeah. And that that line, I don't give a damn what the tribal chief says, and the way that the camera. So it what was really neat. Was just the production of this this segment. The, the conversation between Jay and Sammy was happening with such a tight camera shot on the two of them behind the back of Roman the produce lady even while watching said did Roman leave and I was like no he's there he's just like kind of like in, behind the camera like he's in front of the camera like you don't you can't see him and then for them to be going back and forth like that the cameraman to walk out of frame just at the right second for them to go full frame so then you can see Roman snap his head up when he hears that and slowly turn to look at Jay and Jay just being like, oh man, like you could just see him uncomfortable. I'm about to get my whoop in. And he's just like, all right, just take it on the chin. Just take it on the chin. Mm-hmm. Kind of a look, you know? And then Sammy being it. like, I mean it. He just yeah. kept saying, I mean it. I mean it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then when he grabbed him, right? When Roman grabbed him and he tried to turn away to the crowd and he's like, no, 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 no. You, you come right here. Stand yeah. right here. <laughs> yeah. So good because he was laughing. Yeah, he, couldn't, he didn't want to look at the camera. He was laughing and Roman. Oh thing. man, and Jimmy, Jimmy was a Jimmy man. If you look in the back and look at Jimmy, he was he's cracking up, man. Yeah. Oh, it was amazing. Man. Especially with the Sammy Uso thing, he was he was he was it. That was it. Everything they're doing and Solo and Sammy together. Solo saying shit like he could learn a lot from Sammy. <laughs> he did an interview. I forgot. I don't know what podcast it was, but he did an interview for a podcast, and someone said, "If you could team with um, with either of your brothers to win the tag championship, who would you pick, Jimmy or Jay?" And he just didn't even miss a beat. He goes, "Sammy." <laughs> <laughs> it was the bump. Yeah. Nice. So good. So good. Everything they're doing, dude. Bloodline is on. Just when you think they can't get on a bigger, on a higher level. They go ahead and do that. They show you what the next level looks like. Uh, man, that is going to bring us. You know to... what the next next level is? Hmm. The Rock Daughter, man. The Rock Daughter got to join, and it yeah. has to be a female in the group, man. Because look at, you know, I know we want to probably mention this, but look at what what uh, Rhea's doing for the Judgment Day. Rhea's it's doing crazy. big stuff for the Judgment Day. It's crazy. Are you excited about Roman versus Logan Paul and Crown Jewel? A lot of people have been uh, speculating a lot about it. A lot of people have a lot of things to say. Well, yeah, what's the speculations? A lot of people think that, that it's really funny to me because it just goes back to old school mentality of like, it's taking the spot from one of the boys. Imagine working there for 10 years and not getting this match and it goes to some guy on social media and they're not looking at what it is. They're not looking at All right. the fact that this is actually elevating Roman Reigns to a different level of stardom to where other news outlets want to talk about it because news outlets talk about what Logan Paul is doing you know they don't talk about no disrespect but they're not talking about what Seth Rollins is doing you know what I mean Seth Rollins puts out a tweet or says something on a podcast and the same old same old pick it up 
Logan Paul says something on his podcast, a lot of people start pointing to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's just a matter of how do you elevate Roman when he's at the top? Well, you get a guy like this to do a spot like this, and it works out just fine. You know what I mean? Now Roman's in the conversation of Mayweather. You know what I mean? Who's all the people that, that Logan Paul's fought? And there's Roman Reigns right in the middle of all that? Great. You know, but... Are you one of the types who think that celebrities ruin wrestling? That this is everything that's wrong with wrestling? That Logan hasn't done enough to earn a title shot? How do you feel about this? Well, to answer that, um, just in a wrestling standpoint, not nothing else, just in a wrestling standpoint, on a man, like Roman says, the man has two matches. Two matches going against the greatest of all time yeah I mean it it just don't match up it just don't it don't match up when you think about it in that standpoint now let's go on what your standpoint was with the media with the social media with the eyes that's going to be on to this this match um Floyd Mayweather was retired Mm mhm retired and he came out and did this charity match with him and they made millions mm-hmm. and, and and everybody was watching including me right so you can only imagine how they're going to uh, be for a guy that's not retired in his prime who's um, on a streak that he's on the greatest of all time on guard mode going against Logan Paul social media darling I mean this is like Titan versus Titan yeah you know it, it, yeah. it's it's that way so it's like WWE uh, conglomerate and media conglomerate head to head boom and and that's just money baby so for your point yeah you know I mean like yeah that's that's what it is you know it, it's definitely great for eyes to watch and and great for the money standpoint um great for uh people to actually see um roman's reign legacy and see um actually how long he's been doing this and it has been on this reign and it's going to be on a global platform a global market and it's in uh what is it saudi arabia yeah yeah I think I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. we talking money here. <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah, and even when and, and when you look at Logan Paul, makes sense. when you look at Logan Paul as like a character, even like outside of wrestling, just the character, the personality that is Logan Paul. How many boxing matches did he have before he challenged Mayweather to spar? It's kind of not his deal. He doesn't work on being an expert in the field before going for the top. You know what I mean? Like, for better or for worse. Like, that's not even a necessarily bad thing for him to say, like, look, we can make money in doing this. Yeah, I've got no business in the ring with you, but that's the charm of this. You know what I mean? Like, on paper, I have no business. So if I can hold my own, then that's a talking point, you know? And so, yeah, I think that, I think he's going to try and hold his own. Uh, It's pretty sick, pretty sick. Uh, And then Roman, even on Raw, was really good. Well, uh, let's see. Oh, and uh, except, I mean, we'll get to Raw. Let me go through SmackDown, and we'll talk some more story stuff. Uh, so, uh, Brawling Brutes versus Solo and Sammy. I loved it. That's more of the same stuff. Roman Reigns. Oh, hold on. This is all. Okay, New Day versus the Maximum Male Models. New Day. Are you at least excited for LA Knight coming back? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, um I like the fact that um he's not afraid to uh to say screw it, you know. It ain't working. Uh let's go back to what was working. Right? Yeah. Like I think that's that's one of my problems, right? Like um I went to one platform and then I was like, I think we outgrew this one. And I went to the, a, another platform, and it was like, oh, my gosh, this is 
where are we at? <laughs> yeah. And then I said, okay, you know what? Let's go back to the original platform. So um, sometimes you just have to do that, man. And uh, gotta go back home to go ahead and go move forward. But sometimes you make that wrong turn left. <laughs> yep. Hey. I agree. What do you think about New Day? I keep thinking that they seem a little directionless. They're always good. They always put on great matches. They're always very entertaining when it comes to being on the mic. But I kind of don't know what they're doing. They don't seem to be on a hunt for the Usos titles. They've also had a ton of wars with the Usos to begin with. But maybe that's just kind of the the backlash for putting both tag titles on one team in such a predominant story like the Bloodline. Is now when you have these long-term tag teams that carry the tag division quite often in their storytelling that there's no story for them to capitalize on you know what i mean are they going for number one contendership like are they are the viking raiders even to come back do they have an issue with them still like if no one's going for those titles what does it all culminate to i guess i don't know it's, i don't know if there's um, an answer but <laughs> not it's not but it's interesting um to see what's going on with the new day but at the same time I, I actually thought about it myself um when I was watching one of these programs but they need and I think I mean it's obvious you know they missing Big E right like it, it, they missing Big E that's a, that's a huge yeah uh personality that they are missing and um, he's like the spokesperson for him, man. And um, even in their intro, man, you you hear his voice. That that's that's you know what I mean. Like that's sometimes that makes me feel it. something. Yeah, you know and what I mean. Then I hear it's it like, and go, oh my god. So you know, I it's missing, and it, and I'm I'm grateful that they didn't even disband it, right? Yeah. Like I'm glad that they still like, all right, you know what leave them the way they are you know what I mean because I thought about it I'm like man they've been doing this for years and I think I think that's what made me think about it because um they was talking about the streak and how much it meant to them Mm -hmm. to hold it and uh that um you know I thought that um it would be another Uso New Day one more time thing um just you know just the last this our last stop to try to stop y'all from breaking our record type of thing right yeah. like I thought that was what was gonna happen um but it didn't and now they all over the place like you said but again to me I think more of it is just like they um they missing Big E and uh I, I seen that uh he's doing some NASCAR thing uh doing a yeah announcement on that so um hopefully we'll see him soon man because um that's what's missing with the new day and uh it, it it won't be the same if they disband them and it won't be the same if they keep on going with this two man thing it's, it's, it's kind of like the um with uh, Quavo and Takeoff Rust in Peace and Takeoff like you know yeah. I, I loved them but it was like alright y'all the Migos though right like y'all the Migos where the third one at where yeah. is the third one I, I, I get y'all having problems all right, yeah, I made a, another album, but where's the third guy? All right, that, that's fine. All right, but where's mm-hmm. the third guy? And I feel the same way, like, with New Day. It's like, all right, y'all cool and all. This is awesome. It still sounds like a Migo album. Yeah. But where's the third guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rest yeah. in peace. Maybe that's off. part that's of That's unfortunate. Yeah, that sucked when I read about that, too. Like, And I'm not as... Um... I listen to a lot of current radio and stuff, so I'm my my really my first introduction to knowing who they were was when they popped on WWE this past year, and then I was like, I would re- I realized I'd recognize a number of their songs, but I don't buy albums. I don't. I mean, if it's on the radio, right. I just keep moving, right? So it's like I didn't right, right. I didn't know them as closely. Uh, but when I did read that the other day, like yeah, like you said, rest in peace, Migos. Like, or was it Takeoff? Is that what his name? Yeah, Takeoff. Yeah, that sucked. And then I read a little bit more on it's it. It's a young one. He's the baby. Uh, that was a nephew. That's crazy. Yeah, really young guy. Um, 
But yeah, maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's why they feel a little directionless is they just feel like they're missing something with Big E being gone for so long and there's no titles for them to go for. It just is like, it almost feels like, okay, good, Woods and and Kofi have clocked in for the day. You know what I mean? Like, they're just there because they're good at what they do, but there's no, like, purpose. You know what I mean? And maybe without Big E, they're a little nervous to do the purpose, especially because it got halted right there in the middle when they're doing the Brutes, which now it's going to be Brutes and Usos at, at Crown Jewel. We'll see. A uh, couple things real quick. Liv Morgan and Sonya Deville had their big thing going on. Hold up. Wait yeah. a minute. Wait a minute. My bad. I'm so sorry. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> You said the brutes, and 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 then um, <laughs> and the bloodline. It made me remember how they tore uh Seamus arm up, bro. Yeah. Oh, they tore his arm up. I mean, ooh, that was a crazy was, spot. <laughs> I mean, I was like, okay, stop. Like somebody stop. And Sammy had to stop Jay, man. That, that's, that was hilarious. Oh, dude, it was cool. awesome. And it was such a great spot the way they did it with the chair and his arm in there. Like, you know that the oh, magic man. of it is that it was one of those things where I'm looking at it just thinking, like, I don't know how you do that and not hurt someone. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. Like, what are they doing? How How is that? No, like, yeah, there's because you, you're hurt. watching and you know they're not breaking his arm, but you're also watching going, like, I don't know how that trick is done. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just looks right. so vicious and so perfect. For real. Uh, no, nah, he definitely hurt, bro. Some way, yeah. like something. Well, hurt. and then congratulations to Seamus. He got married this past uh, weekend, so congrats. To oh, him. so that's probably what it was. Yeah. Probably. I'm probably off but... for the wedding. Uh, what do you think about this new change of Liv Morgan that we're getting this this quote more extreme Liv Morgan, especially after losing the title to Ronda. The makeup doesn't Brilliant. have the jewels anymore, but it's got kind of like crooked clown makeup almost on the eyes, almost a little crowish. Uh, You're bringing these subjects, man. You're bringing them. Um, yeah, so interesting. Um, when she was like uh, doing all that, um, jumping off and uh, doing the, the senton onto uh, Deville, right? Yeah. And um, she was showing. Uh, her name is escaping me right now. The champion. Rhonda? Rhonda. Yeah. Right? She was trying to show Rhonda that she was extreme and all that, right? I thought it was crazy because, I mean, it's, it's one thing to uh, jump off the top rope into the to the announce table. That, that's dangerous in its own right. But there is no brace for your fall when you mm-hmm. going that way, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, when you you doing frog splash, okay. All right, maybe you can brace yourself with the arm a little bit. But when you're going, you know, <laughs> you're going backwards and you're falling on, that was dangerous because you could miss easily, easily, and break your back and break it. So I thought that was dumb and, and crazy. And then through the match, what was so weird was when she was passing out, smiling. And yeah. I was like, wait a minute. And they even mentioned it. They're like, oh, is she smiling? And I'm like, yeah, she looks like she's smiling. Like, what is, what is that? Oh, yeah. Like, what's going on here? Then then see her afterwards, and she's just going crazy. She's just going crazy, like. And I don't know what to make of it. Like, I really don't. It's like, where where are we going with it? Like, where are we going with it? Where are we going with it, though? Like, because, yeah, I mean, she's definitely extreme. And she's definitely not taking no, no BS, right? But where are we going with this? Is it like... A uh, Lexo Bliss type of thing? Is that where we going at? Mm. Where are we going? I think we are getting kind of a cool uh, 
crazy Liv. I like that her selling is becoming different where it's not like you just have to sell the effects of what's happening, not like so, so you can't ignore what happened, right? A no sell is truly ignoring what happened. Someone punches you and you stand there and you look at them and you go, oh, you beat your chest. Oh, what do you think that hurts me? Can't hurt me. Liv's not no selling. She's selling that the pain is becoming funny. She's enjoying the pain in a different way. Mankind sold it a different way back when he would rip his hair out and punch his own head. He was selling torment through pain and pain made him feel something. And so when can you hurt him enough to make him give up if he's willing to hurt himself to feel anything at all? Right. I like this version of Liv being that she now knows that she can tolerate so much pain that she's no longer afraid of it. And it's kind of funny to her that people are putting her through that, knowing full well that she's not going to give up. If she can withstand Ronda Rousey choking her out that way, to me, that was like the crack. That was the laugh at her. The smiles was like, oh, I can withstand anything. Doesn't mean you're going to win anything, but it does mean that your fear of pain becomes different, right? And so with every hit and the worse it is, the more she'll smile and laugh. I think it's pretty cool. It's a really neat way to do it. To, to your point, where do you go from there? What To what end? I don't know that you need a super direction. I think you just need a well-established character. And to show that shift in the character, maybe you end up with the heelish type live. Maybe it's a super babyface underdog thing where she just won't give up, but she's a maniac. You're right, though. It's I don't know if you said it so much as I picked it up from what you were saying. It's not that far from Nikki Cross and her new insane gimmick that she's back to doing, the let Nikki play kind of thing. Um, I like it because it gives Liv a little more depth than we've gotten with her in the past. I'm curious about it, but yeah, I don't know. I hope it means that we get another title reign from her. I don't think she makes a bad champion at all. I think she's a really easy to get behind kind of babyface, kind of an underdog type, you know? But how do you always be the underdog? I'd rather see her, like, by any means necessary, get the job done. Yeah. Not not no baby face. Like, I mean, I want to see underhanded track tactics. Excuse me. I want to see underhanded tactics go on. I want to see her just go through any possible way because that darn belt means that much to her. Being a champion means that much to her. She lost her mind when she lost that title. That's what I want to see. Yeah. And I ain't going to lose this championship again. I'll get it one more time, never losing it again. That's what I want to see from her. She would be a cool one. Not that WWE's going to do it, but when I think about, like, when I think of the, like, Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker unsanctioned match, imagine, like, an, an ending of a match where Liv takes a title and she's laughing and she's covered in blood holding up this title like not even all the way over her head just like holding it out and she's just laughing beat the fuck up kind of almost like Nate Diaz like that dude takes more punches than anyone in the world better than anyone else that's the coolest thing about Nate Diaz fights is at the end of it he just ate a thousand punches and he's lumpy and bloody and he's still talking shit and he doesn't care and you you watch him during the, the fights and they're just wiping away blood just because he's bleeding so much. And they're like, oh, yeah, don't stop the match. He can keep going. And you're like, how? He's got no face, right? If you had that kind of almost perception of Liv. Liv would breathe. She just kept going. Liv did not keep going when she got kicked in the face by Bree. She tried. She was out, and they pushed her out of the ring and helped her on the outside. She went face first into the mat with that kick to the Bree. Never mind. Never mind. She turned off. She that was a hard shutdown from when Liv got kicked in the face yeah, by Bree. Uh, Spinner Fox does say ding dong hello, and is it worth those major bumps though? Like to Shake's point, I I think there is a certain part where we believe without being trained in the thing, which is their art. I have a feeling that so many people do the senton because it's probably much safer than we think. With that in mind major bumps off the top through a chair or through the table into a senton probably you'd think probably is pretty bad on the tailbone 
maybe you do them now so she doesn't have to do them later. I don't know. That hurts me. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts. This little rock says, I like that Liv becomes ruthless. 100%. Uh, yeah, but I'm liking that. I'm liking the Liv thing. Um, I'm excited about it. I think that she's such a good champion. I think that she got a little... I think the way that they got her out of the title, too, if they really wanted to move on, I think it was smart. Let's give her a shift, a character shift, have her become a maniac. I'm cool with that. We'll see. I think she can pull it off. Apparently, it has something yeah, to do with the yeah, character she had pitched for them before. Course. I'm sorry, what? Apparently, she had pitched a darker character before. Um, yeah, even in her... Uh, what was it? The... Um, I think it's Live Forever, the special they put on the network. It's on Peacock now. She insinuates there that she had a darker character that they said no. So maybe this is what we're getting. Darker character. Maybe. I just hope it don't run its course. True. True. Uh, Ronda Rousey versus Emma. Emma answered the open challenge. Before I say anything at all, what do you think about Emma's return? <laughs> whatever <laughs> you say whatever whatever dude that was my thought too I saw a lot of people being like oh my god when they were talking online about like oh could she return and people were freaking out and I'm not one to rain on anyone's parade so I let them celebrate but in my mind I saw it and went oh huh okay and that was it. That was the, the highest level of, pre, of of excitement I got out of it. I'm not trying to knock her. My understanding is that the period of time she spent in Impact, that she's improved greatly. From what I saw in the Rousey-Emma match, it didn't excite me to see any more. I always like people getting highlighted. I like wrestlers having jobs. I'm not going to come on here and be all like, she's one you got to get rid of or anything like that. But I just... I think I'm very whatever, and I hope that they give me a reason and feed me stuff to make me care. You know what I mean? Because I didn't feel like the roster was lacking her. Not to be offensive or mean. It just, the the roster's already pretty strong. So when I saw her, I went, oh, okay. I guess she's here. Didn't feel like a massive addition. Mm-hmm. Then all the Emma bombs and Emma, everything Emma... Yeah. All her moves, Nate, Emma. Oh, yeah. This was like what? Yeah. 2016, just... 17. I'm past this. <laughs> 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 I guess we'll see how it plays out. Uh, Sprint Fox says uh, there was a reboot. Bishop's coming through the chat, says, Cheers, cheers to Bishop. And Sprint Fox says, I remember when Emma was facing off Paige in NXT. Um,. Emma is dating somebody. I don't know his name. He called it a month ago. Uh, yeah, um, Madcap Moss is who she's dating. Uh, and so it was kind of interesting that they both were on SmackDown this week. But, which is fine. I don't have a problem with it. And I don't have a problem with her. And I'm not saying, like, I never want to see her on TV again. I just, she didn't leave such a lasting impression that I feel like it's this big hole we're missing in the roster. She hasn't made a big enough splash on the indie scene to make me go, I can't wait to see that in WWE again. And I'm not trying to say that. I mean, I know it sounds negative and it sounds like shit talk. And I just, I don't intend it that way. I'm just saying there hasn't been enough there for me to latch on to to begin with. So to see her back now, I just went kind of like you. All right, whatever. Let's see how this goes. Like, I'm open to it and I hope that there's more and I hope that I get excited and I hope that she's in a story that I think is amazing. But like... As of right now, it was like, okay, Emma's here. But then I was just kind of like moving on. Uh, yep. Speaking of moving on, Hit Row was joined by Shinsuke against Legata del Fantasma. Oh, man. Hit Row. That's crazy. Hit, hit Row. Hit Row fan. I they think not- Hit Row's cool. Yeah, but... I think LDF they missing is cool. my boy, man. They missing my boy, Swerve. Yeah, they are missing Swerve. Twitter Fox says, I'm happy for her, but I just hope psoriasis don't affect her this run. Yeah, if that's what helped her, that if that's what fucked up her last run, then yeah. I always hope for the best for their health, if nothing else. Here's my only problem with LDF and Hit Row. I watch NXT. Yeah. So I'm 
ready to move on from this story. This is this is where I'm starting to see Triple H's undying faith in NXT as a product in all things versus the Vince McMahon undying uh, uh, disbelief in NXT. This is where I feel like everything comes to a head, right? Like NXT call-ups were constantly quote mishandled mistreated if it worked in nxt why didn't you try it on the main roster it felt like before vince mcmahon constantly said just because it worked in nxt doesn't mean it's going to work on a bigger stage right it feels like triple h's thought process is the only reason nxt didn't get 2.5 million viewers is because it's not on fox on friday nights i don't believe that i believe the fluctuating nxt ratings has a lot to do with what's on their show. And I feel like if 2 million people wanted to watch NXT, they would find it and watch it. People find and watch SmackDown and Raw, and I do think that there's a a section of people who are just in the routine of putting on wrestler, or putting on wrestling on those, those times and nights, yes. But there were weeks that NXT wasn't even clearing 300,000. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think everything that's going to work in NXT will work on on the larger scale. And I feel like putting LDF with Hit Row, there's a weird mix here. When I think of Gargano and I think of this, this feels like Triple H is saying, look at not everyone who watches NXT. Here's an amazing story we told in NXT we can tell on, t- on this TV. And it's like no one ever saw it, so it's okay. Then you see the way he treats Gargano, and it's all like, look, everybody watched NXT, so we don't have to explain anything about Gargano. They're just going to accept him as a top babyface. And it's, like, contradictory. You know what I mean? Mm. So this was a good match that I just didn't give a shit about because I've seen it a dozen times, and I want to see these two teams work with other teams. The coolest part for me when teams leave NXT is to watch them work with main roster talent and not just work with their friends again. That's what I want. Spinner Fox says, but can you, but you can't have Hit Row without their main attraction unless they add somebody like Swerve to the stable. Who could that be, though? Believe it or not, the main attraction of Hit Row was always designed to be uh, top dollar. Swerve was meant to be a side note. So they think this is going to work. I, I don't hate the group. And I hope a lot of people love this match. But I do not need to see this ongoing. Shakes, what was your thought? I mean, was it good? Am I being too harsh? Nah, um, I think it's all the way poorly run. I didn't even see the NXT run. You know, I don't really watch it like that. Okay. So I'm one of those people that did not see it, right? Perfect. So it's going to be interesting to get my take because you've seen it and you're like, all right, I've seen it so many times. Yeah. All right, and I wasn't interested. Well, for me that didn't see it, I still wasn't interested ah. because, <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why. All right, for one, I'm interested only with the, the two females. That's nice to see them, and I want to see them go at it because they both can go, right? Mm-hmm. But that's the only thing. And then the match ended with Hit Row winning in, in the cheesiest fashion, Right? And it's like, why would you even bring this group up and hype them up to be some dangerous group and then they lose their first match? Yeah. I mean, so for me, in the match, I'm thinking the whole time that they were going to win because they're going to try to keep on hyping them up. But then they lose in the in the cheesiest way. And I'm like, oh, so they're not hyping them up then. And I'm like, well... That's what true. the hell did you call them up for? There is a big problem that me and Kevlar have always had and really talked on since episode one. When you have someone join a team for one night or you have someone have to find a partner and they beat the established team that's supposed to be a unit, that's a problem. That the fact that thing. Shinsuke had never worked with Hit Row and they defeated that Legata. Another thing. That was another thing. Yeah. yeah, that was another thing. That was terrible. Legato should have beat Shinsuke. them, and they should have pinned Shinsuke to make a point. That as a unit, we could even beat a Shinsuke. Right. But this was like, oh, no, even as a unit, we're still not that strong. Right. 
And then like the whole Shinsuke with them, so odd. It's like it was just so odd. Everything He's the about it. And I, I don't and it's not I'm not trying to make it as a um a race thing. I'm not even making it a race thing. But I'm making it as a a connection thing. Um that's like really like having uh Aerosmith hanging out with NWA. Well Aerosmith did hang out with Run DMC. I mean, but that's all I'm saying, though. <laughs> that's that's just a whole different thing. We're talking about NWA. Right? <laughs> it don't mix. It just don't mix. And that my point is, is that no disrespect to Shinsuke is a great wrestler, but that didn't make, match with um, Hit Row. I really thought that it was going to be, and again, that's why I say it's not even a race thing. It's just a culture thing for me. Mm. But I thought it was going to be, um, uh, what's the name, partner? Um, Prophet, Street Prophets. So I was going to be Montez? Big dude. Or Dawkins? Not the one, Dawkins, because um, Montez is hurt. Right? Is he? Yeah. I know With that. the ankle. Yeah, I yeah, he's that. in a boot. You didn't know that, huh? I don't know. Yeah, man. so don't anyway. attention to Montez. Look. Yeah, yeah. I get All a lot right, so, of people like Street Profits. I do not. When they're on TV, I don't pay he attention. In the he's in a boot. He's wearing so a boot. I thought, he's in a boot. <laughs> so I thought... <laughs> he's in a boot. So I thought that, you know, this was a perfect opportunity yeah. for Dawkins to shine without Tez. Yep. And so, okay, I'm still good. I'm still relevant. And I'm with a pack that I've dealt with before and yep. it's in my same realm. They, yep. You know what I mean? Like, I, yep. that's what I thought it was going to be. And then when I seen Shemsky, I'm like, oh, what the hell is it going here? Yeah. It, it just didn't make sense to me. It's funny you say that too because in the chat, and I know you can't see the chat where you're watching, uh, Splinter Fox says, I really don't like how race is involved with these two stables. Maybe they add a different race to the mix like Sammy's in the bloodline, which is a whole other conversation on... The amount of times that in wrestling as tropes, they pair together people with very similar cultures, uh, which is sometimes based because they do, they are friends in real life and they're easy to work with and they travel together already and things like that. That's already part of it. They already have a chemistry because of that. It's not strictly just like someone sees three people in three parts of the building and say, they look all the same. Let's put them together. They're teamed up a lot of times because they're actually usually friends in real life right, and typically and put connection. together that way, right? Yeah. It's actually why mm-hmm. Bradshaw and uh, Ron Simmons were teamed together. They were traveling together a bunch right. and they were really good friends in real life. That's how a lot that of the teams come together. And it's still that just works. the nature of human... Uh, um, it's just human nature. The nature of human. I'm trying to figure out how to say it the other way. It's just human mm-hmm. nature. A lot of times people gravitate to people who look like them, talk like them, sound like them, grew up like them. Mm-hmm. It's it's very much a you thing. You click and so, with people hmm? that you click with people that you um uh, that that you take interest with. Yeah. Like, really uh, you got the same ways. interest, yeah. Like um, But at I the can't, same time I can't sit there and chill with somebody that um that's just in a NASCAR. I don't know nothing about cars. I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, what can I, what can I talk to you about? Like, yeah. I don't, I don't know what we want to do here. You all you pull up, and the guys all like, "Hey, did you see the yeah, Indy 500?" And you're all like, "I better go." Um, no, <laughs> have you seen the Super Bowl? <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know what we doing here. Yeah. Uh, but then, so Spinfox says this right after. He goes, I would love to see Dawkins turn heel, break away from Ford, and join Hit Row and be the main dude. Which is funny because that's exactly – it's similar to what you said. But I actually think that you guys found something in the middle there. If Montez is hurt, he doesn't need to turn heel to just join Hit Row. Hit Row needs a fourth. Hey, man, I'm just doing nothing. Let me help you guys out. I've earned a lot of respect from having to to, to fight you guys. We could actually help each other out. Then when Montez is healed, he shows up months later and goes, what are you doing? And then you have a clash of mentality. It's like, oh, you guys can hang out with them. Maybe they don't like Tez. And now maybe you get Tez on a solo run because him and, and Dawkins are clashing. But Dawkins has a new group. You know what I mean? And he's like, ah, oh, you don't. Yeah, you know, you're you overreacting, his, Tez. You know, yeah, and Tez, Tez is like, no. Tez can go on his, uh, his heel run. Yeah. And he can go on that run that they so 
desperately want to uh, give him. Yeah. Because they yeah. definitely want to give him a solo run. They want to Bobby Brown him. So. Bobby Brown him. Yeah. You know, you know how they talk to Bobby Brown. You can leave New Edition and oh, do yeah. your own solo thing. And hmm. You can be a, a mega star. That's what they do on the test. Yeah, for sure. Oh, you don't and this would be him. a. This would be a really. (laughs) (laughs) I think this would be a really mutually beneficial way to accomplish that as well. You know what I mean? Like, hey, maybe start the break now while Tez is out, and then when they come back, you can have some great matches between Tez and Dawkins. You can have, yeah. I think I think I actually could work out really well for for all parties if they're even interested. Uh, Spin Fox does say. Yeah, leave the group, be the main man. Um, and then Spinner Fox says, I'm so excited to see Shin and Noah face the Great Muda in January. Uh, 100%, dude. You saw that? Great Muda versus mm-hmm. Shinsuke is going to be in Noah in Japan January 1st. It's part of Great Muda's having a, a retirement run. He said, this is it. I'm wrapping it up. I want to have a handful of matches. I think that how it's going to take Ariel Hawani for us to find out how that came to be. <laughs> but I'm excited to hear the story. Years. 50 years or something like that, right? Has it has it been fifty years? It's gotta be. It's gotta be. Gotta be. He, like what? Yeah. Great Muda. Um, but yeah, that Bro, was awesome. Bro, the Great Muda was a legend when I was a little boy. Yes. Yes. It's exciting, dude. It's really cool. <laughs> it's really cool. Right. I'm gonna shotgun through a couple more things because I want us to get a little bit further down the line. Although. Shayna Baszler just choking the shit out of Natalia backstage was intense. Yes. Oh man, please. Is that what we were talking about right now? I mean, I don't have much to say other than that. So you say all you want about it. Okay, good, good, good. Because you remember, right? I've been lobbying for this. Mm-hmm. I've been lobbying for Ronda Rousey to turn heel. And not only turn heel, but to make her own type of version of the Heart Foundation, right? Remember I said, I wanted Shane Baszler, and I wanted Natalya to be her little minions or whatever, Ronda Rousey, and I thought that would have been a great group. Now, fast forwarding to this, we finally got starting to see that Baszler is going to be with Ronda Rousey now. That's that's awesome. That's great. I'm happy. And she's a psychopath. But, it (laughs) <laughs> kind of knocked out my other whole scenario with Natalia joining them too and being a whole three fact, you know, three woman faction and they choked her out and said, no, nah, you, you ain't nothing. So I don't or is that an initiation thing between them? Maybe, you know, it's like, alright we choked you out, we might as well join us. <laughs> I don't know, you know. <laughs> Damn, we'll tell. That's you how know? it worked with Dom. That's how Dom got in Judgment Day. They beat the shit out of him for a while and right. now he's part of the group. That's right. It's initiation. No. Yeah, some groups are blood in and blood out, man. That's all right. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, Mad Cat Moss and Carrying Cross. I just wanted to uh, point out uh, mad respect for cutting in a timer promo while being the big spoon in a cuddle puddle. That was really interesting. Did you catch that bit? No. When uh, Karrion Cross was choking out uh, Mad Cat Moss <laughs> and he was just the big spoon just holding on tight and cut a whole promo in there. Really neat. Uh, Spin Fox says nobody joins unless Shayna gets to choke them out first. That's pretty good. Uh, That's Bray right. Wyatt. What do you think about all this Bray Wyatt stuff? Bray Wyatt's back. The White Rabbit's here. Uncle Howdy. Boy Howdy. Howdy boy. Uncle Howdy. Yeah. I think it's Boy Howdy. Or Howdy boy. Cause he's just all, and then he says all that weird stuff. He he's got the dangly oh, earring. I think there's a very good possibility that with Boy Howdy, we have a Tony Clifton scenario. We have a character that can be played because of the voice of it by multiple people, and I think that there are times you will see Bray Wyatt face to face with Boy Howdy, and I think there may be times that you see Bo Dallas face to face with Boy Howdy. Howdy boy. And I think that you're going to see a whole bunch of a bunch of stuff. Like I think that multiple people will be able to play Howdy boy. Hey, oh no, why Bo Dallas? Cuz he sounds like Bray. He can do the same voices. <laughs> and he knows how to he knows how to bump. So why not? Just bring back Bo Dallas. Yeah. Oh, I just yeah, I just fantasy booked Bo Dallas back in the company. I don't understand I contracts. It's not a concern of mine. 
I see that. Uh, Spinner Fox says he can't stand Cross, doesn't get it, and he doesn't understand Bray either. All right. Wait, what Cross? Nikki Cross? No, Carrying oh, Cross. Carrying Cross. Okay. Do you like Carrying Cross? I've seen a lot of people say they're bored with him and don't no. like him. I don't. You don't like Cross? Yeah. It's stupid Which, to me. He's TikTok. stupid to you? <laughs> <laughs> TikTok. You probably like Drew Mack and Fart. <laughs> no, you know I hate him. That's you know point. I hate him. I hate him so much. <laughs> I hate him so much. <laughs> but it's it's I don't know, it's just like you're trying too hard for me, mm. Cross. Like you you just you, you're trying too hard. And then even though his girl is sexy, she is sexy to me. Mm. I don't know why. I like crazy women. But yep. you know, she even is over the top for me, you know, it's just like <sighs> Yeah. So what about Bray then? then comes, Are you into the Bray stuff? Um, I I don't know what direction they're going in, and I never know what direction they're going in with uh Bray Wyatt, right? So that's the beauty of it. Like yes. you you just you just sit back and enjoy it and say, Okay, well what the hell is he gonna do next? Like yeah, I think that's why it's so fun to watch him. He's a master artist who happens to use wrestling as a medium that we get to enjoy. Yeah, and um, it's it's his mind. He he has a creative mind. Um, it's like a uh, Rob Zombie. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, he has that creative mind. So um, he he will be he'll be good in uh, making horror flicks. Right. That's what I thought he was going to do. He and then he came back to WWE, that, right? and I was like, oh, shit, I guess we'll see. Yeah, you might want to do that. Bro. But, um, yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing with him. Um, you know, and, and it was crazy because um, when he came back and he was just, like, you know, thanking everybody. And he's like, you know, thank you. Uh, you know, it, it meant a lot. Y'all, y'all, y'all brought me out of a, a dark place and everything. And I was like, oh, Lord, here we go. We live in for the freaking fans man I'm not gonna like Bray Wyatt going forward I, you know me with these darn fan favorites I can't stand it so I'm I'm gearing up for it I'm like oh man he's doing this bull crap yeah and then he just turned it around just like that just turned it all around just like, and I'm like what the hell is this and I, I don't even think he said it at the first time I think he said it the second time um, mm-hmm. that he was Uncle Howdy but just the Howdy I'm boy. just like, what? What the hell is this? He yeah. says he's Uncle Howdy. Okay, you call him up. He's Howdy boy. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I'm into it. We'll see. Spinner Fox says everyone needs the piss break. Speaking of piss break, we have Monday Night Raw, and there is just not enough piss in the world to break that often. But it did start with Bianca Belair defeating Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross is back. She's no longer almost a superhero. She's actually a crazy bitch. What would that be? ACB? Nikki ACB. Nikki, actually crazy bitch. What do you think about this new Nikki Cross return to old? The Nikki wants to play type. She hasn't said anything in her promos. I feel like it's got to be bittersweet. I think that there's part of Nikki Cross that always felt like it would work. It didn't work. And then I think that there was a... She went on record saying that she was pitching for the superhero thing for quite some time. uh, And got them to to finally allow her to do the, the superhero thing. And then that didn't seem to stick the way that she seems to have wanted it to. Like, it was like a nine-month process, her getting them to agree to it. So I think there's got to be a better a bittersweetness to it where it's like, hey, you really believed in the superhero thing. It's just not clicking. Let's go back to the, the Nikki Cross of crazy that we never gave enough time to. I, I feel like it's got to be bittersweet for her. Uh, but... Once we start getting some of those crazy promos, play with me. It's going to be fucking great. I didn't love that she lost oh. here. Uh, damage Control came out and beat Shella Bianca. We had the return of Asuka and Alexa. Mm. There's a lot here. Yeah. And, and you know what? To me, I mean, that's 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 great. I, I, I would like for her to 
like go with a, a group like Judgment Day or something like that, right? Like, mm. like just dark and just they just use Nikki to just do their their bidding, like whatever. Just take the punches, get beat up or whatever. She's the one that takes them them hits and lumps and all that. And she's crazy enough to take them. Like I think that's her. You know, she'll be perfect in that role. Just thinking outside yeah. the box with that. But, um. <sighs> I'm interested. I'm interested to see what they're gonna do with this going forward. Um, cause they can go about this so many ways, but are they um going to stick with the creative process of trying to keep going, or are they just gonna say, okay, this is what you are, and you we're gonna stick with this, and and then it's just gonna stale out. That's that. That's the whole yeah. thing. Like, okay, that you went back to this, but now don't let it stale out. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, enhance and be creative off of it. And I don't think that they're going to do that. I don't think yeah. that WWE is, is, is creative enough to do that. Yeah. I'm I'm worried about a few things creatively here, and we're going to talk about it because a lot a lot stemmed from this opening thing. Although Swin Fox does say she loses right away, that's dumb. This is Belair is becoming more of a female John Cena, and I'm over it, which is just a funny statement because John Cena is one of the greatest to ever do the thing. <laughs> Blair's like becoming really close to the greatest of all time, and I hate it. Yeah, okay, well. Um, <laughs> he says, Bailey's our only hope. I felt that way for quite some time. She is my Obi Wan Kenobi. So, you thing, can I, real quick? Yeah, what? Um, with, with Cena and everything, like, I don't get mad about the Bianca Belair thing, right? I, no, I do, I do feel like, all right, dang, like, she should have lost against, um, Bailey, excuse me, <laughs> but I do think she should have lost against Bailey. But yeah. um, the fact that she is winning and still winning, I, I don't mind it, and that she's showing um a uh, superiority superiority over these uh other females, I don't mind it um because that that's awesome for her. And the reason why I didn't like it with John Cena is because I just felt like it was him because he was great on the mic. It was him because, you know, like, he had those great one-liners and, and things mm -hmm. that the, the the crowd can go and, and get behind, you know, but I didn't see it in the ring. He didn't have uh, enormous motherfucker, enormous skills where he's uh, athletic, out the, uh, crazy, and he's flipping and doing all these other stuff. No, he, he wasn't a guy that had a million and uh, a thousand and one holds or moves, yeah. no. Like he had like four, five, a handful, of which he even said himself. I got five moves, you know, and that's it. Yeah. So I, I didn't think that all that uh, greatest of all time was warrant for him. Like that to me, I was like, oh man, why do they keep putting the belt on him? Oh, why do they keep doing this? Oh, why do they keep saying he's the greatest of all time? It's like Tom Brady for me, right? So it's like, ah, oh, why, why, why? But with Bianca, I don't feel that way. I feel like she definitely deserves it. Like. She is the most strong. She is the most athletic. She is the, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. she has all these. And then she has the moves to back it up. Yeah. She has a whole bunch of moves. She, like, she's very talented. Very she's talented a settling in, the, in ring. the ring type, which is cool. And so somebody that's going to beat her is going to be somebody. It ain't going to be a Nikki Cross. <laughs> and it should have been a Bailey. But yeah. even her wasn't even suffice to be her. You know who it is? It's Charlotte freaking Flair. No, that is the stupidest shit. Waiting. That's like, what they're right waiting on. with that shit. And Charlotte is the well, No one's of waiting all time. on Charlotte Flair. Yes, no yes they is. No oh, one's yes waiting they for is. that. Oh, no, yes, they not is. Not a damn person wants. Woo! <laughs> Uh, Splinter Fox says that he's talking about not her being amazing, just that she keeps winning. Uh, wants Bailey or Ripley to end it. Um, Ripley would be fucking cool. Oh yeah, she would. Be if they got team. there in the right way, that could be really fucking cool. But yeah, she, let me circle she, back she, to some of this other stuff because we are running a little short on she time. She deserve it though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'll never complain about Bailey holding the championship. She should have definitely won the ladder match in my mind. Now here's the thing. Here's where I'm getting the most. Maria deserves it the most though. But well, go ahead. Rhea's had Rhea plenty Ripley. of titles champion. No, but she a, a deserves it right now. But right none of the now, other ones ever meant anything. Nobody. Listen to me, Breath. <laughs> right now, no 
other female is doing what she is doing she is dominating on a whole nother level she deserves the belt now I think Luke Gallows would agree with you yeah no (laughs) (laughs) he's a good brother so here's my problem with damage control right now three amazing talent who are fantastic at what they do they're the heels they're the dominant faction that's meant to come through and take control of the women's division however Every time they're seen in the ring with baby faces, the baby faces beat the shit out of them. They run them out of town. They beat them in the matches. They just lost the titles in a random match that came out of nowhere with a team that's not that well established. The fact that damage control is not a threat almost makes them the underdogs. They're telling an underdog story with heels. And that's the part that I find the most confusing. If you want me to boo a team, they also need to be dominant because if they lose all the time and then the baby faces go, yeah, I'll face them. Of course you'll face them. They lose all the time. Of course you'll take that match. Like them winning is the upset. The heels shouldn't be winning in an upset. The baby face should be taking over as the underdog. How are they going to get out of this? How are they going to get past these lying, cheating heels who always win, who always cheat to win, who never get left out. Like, they're always outnumbering us. You don't have that with this group. They lose. They're constantly out. Even when they outnumber, once it's the odds are even, they fucking crumble. They don't even get the advantage when they do have the upper hand. So it's just really weird that they've created damage control to be a powerful faction and have booked them like a job squad. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Spoon Fox says I'm surprised Tina Knox hasn't returned. Me too. I thought she'd return before Emma, if I'm honest. I I don't know. Yeah. I heard the argument today Freddie Prince made about how uh, Freddie Prince Jr. Jr. My apologies. uh, No, you go. He'd made that we don't need heels or faces anymore. And his co-host Jeff Dye agreed. Um, I don't agree because I do feel like that... I feel like shit on me all you want, but Jim Cornette and one of the dark side of the rings broke down wrestling as imagine you're driving down the side of the road and you see a big guy and a little guy getting into a fight. And so you pull over because you're like, oh my God, this guy needs my help. He goes, the big guy just beats the shit out of the little guy. You're afraid to get involved. You don't want anything to happen. You stand back and you just see it happen and you feel bad. He goes, but once that little guy starts throwing a little bit of dirt in his eyes and starts getting the upper hand, you start getting excited and you want to see that. He goes, you don't know the story. You don't know the backstory. You don't know what you're, what you're seeing here, but you know who you want to win. And he's, and he says it much better because he's Jim Cornette and that's his, that's his life is to talk better than an idiot like me. <laughs> but there's a reality there to like people need to know. And it was always the old school thing within 30 seconds who they want to win and who they want to lose. Because if you don't want someone to win and want someone to lose, you're just sitting on your hands and you're not that involved. You need heels and baby faces to clearly define who you should want to win win and lose because there is a story here and if you're not on board with the story it's going to fall flat not even that it's so complicated right because his argument was the wrestling audience is refined now they already get that they're performers but they also neglected to say that you still want the fans to want the story to go the way you want it to go right so let's say I get their performers and I don't need someone to say I'm fat for me to say boo uh you just have two performers go out there and you go oh i like that one kind of more than this one well if the other guy wins who i didn't want to win am i really that invested in what moves forward if all i say is like oh yeah well i guess they both could win at any time like you want people to be emotionally invested and that comes from wanting someone to win really bad and the only way you want someone to win really bad is if you really want someone to lose and why would you want a good guy to lose you got to have good guys and bad guys. I just think it's that simple. Producer lady wants to scream something at me. Sorry. Uh, and just thinking of their name, Alt, Control, Alt, Delete, shut it down. That's what you're... That's the message I'm getting from just that name. Like, shut yeah. it all down. That's what we do. Yeah, we're shutting control. it down. We are damage control. Alt. Control, Alt, Delete. All over. End. Slash, root. 
Real quick before I hear from you, Shakes, because I'm going to come right to you. Spinner Fox says, I kind of agree with that statement. People will cheer for their faves, which is true. And he goes, like I do with Rhea and Bailey, face or heel. But the kids, 70%, are kids that they have to have heels or faces to sell the root for. That is my opinion. It is also your fake stat. The 70% you made up. That is clear as day to everyone. There is not 70% 70. of all wrestling fans are children. That's just not true. 70%. But, but I will say that I'm always going to root for Bailey heel or babyface. That doesn't mean that I don't want a story where if she's going to lose, I want to be happy that she lost. And you can do that if you establish the right counter. Oh, Spinner Fox did uh, refine his statement. He goes, well, that, at, that they act like that. And that is probably very true. 70% of wrestling fans behave like children. That is probably true. <laughs> <laughs> Shakes, what do you think about my damage control uh, damaged booking? Yeah, like I said, um, like, to me, <laughs> you know, no, it's to me, I like what they're doing and then I don't. Like, I, I, I like what they're doing with them with the, you know, they always together and they, they always helping each other. I, I like the unification with it. But like you said, like, they don't always win and, you got, I mean, the Usos don't always win, but they always dominate, right? Like, it's mm-hmm. always in a dominant faction, and it's always in a dominant nature. And for them... They stand tall a lot. Yeah. Like, like they damage Sheamus, for, for, right? For, for, yeah. Every exactly. single segment with damage control, they're chased out of the ring, and they're on their asses in the ramp looking up at the baby faces who are sitting there going, yeah, and stay out. And that's my point is that they're not even not even do they lose a lot, but they're not dominant in the between matches either. And in this match particular, the main event, they lost twice. Eo's tapping out. Bailey cheats on their behalf so they don't get counted out, and then they lose again clean. You literally cheated to lose twice. Like now you look stupid and weak. And that sucks because I think this team is awesome. I haven't even worn my damage control shirt yet. Just washed it. Bought it. Haven't even worn it. And now it's like, do I want to rep some losers? <laughs> uh, Spinner Fox says, damage needs to be more low down cheating. It would work better if they handcuff people, grab the tights, lie, cheat, steal, recipes, Eddie. But they did. They cheated yes. and then also lost. Yeah. And they've done that several times. They cheat and lose. Like, what the fuck? Do you think it's because they're going to win it back? Yeah, that's right. Kind of- I think it's very possible they win it back at Crown Jewel, and I think it doesn't matter because you look stupid already. You look double stupid. Well, they, they need to all have the belts to to uh, salvage that. Yeah. And yeah, Fox says, do you think this is the effect of Crown Jewel? I think that there's a lot of stuff with Crown Jewel that makes this booking weird, but go ahead, Shakes. No, I just think that they all need the belts. They do. Barely all of them. I think they do. I think they needed to hold it for a while, a good six, seven months. All be assholes helping each other win. Whenever Bailey's in a match, the other two need to cheat on both sides. Whenever the, the tag team's in a match, Bailey needs to cheat. And people need to get fucking mad at them and say they don't even have fair fights. They're not even ever, they never win. They, they never win, like, without cheating. Like, fuck. That's why Miz has been successful for so long. He's always fucking cheats. Right. That's why Ric Flair was successful. Exactly. It's not that difficult. Exactly. But if you're cheating all the time and also losing. Triple H. Yeah, you look fucking flaccid. Okay. What? Uh, Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley had their whole segment, which we talked about earlier, and was awesome. Seth Rollins and Austin Theory, I thought it was an awesome match. Yeah. And then the rest of the show happened. I mean, well, Roman did his promo, which was dope. He said they're working on being more oozy, which was great. I have to know because this is it like that was it everything else was pretty well JBL and Baron Corbin was good what do you think of all of this Miz and Johnny Gargano stuff mm, I think it's corny corny yeah I think they missed the boat like, I don't I think they had a good initial um, idea with it and then I, I think they just lost it from there it's like okay where do we go from here all right. Uh, just say um, 
he hired him for whatever to, you know, like the story didn't even make sense so why it's like okay why okay so he paid him to choke him out for what okay so he paid him to choke him out and lose the belt for what yeah why uh, I, I, like the whole story just was dumb and him saying oh I'm, I'm being the whistleblower I'm gonna blow this with all that was just corny to me man it's just like alright man y'all could save that yeah, and I think that them thinking that Garni Gargano is good enough to talk for himself, Damien, and others, or not Damien, Dexter, and others, is just wrong. He's a really grating, bad talker who's terrible at comedy, has no comedic timing, and sounds like a child. It's really bad. Like, it's the kind of stuff where, honestly, I like he's the hardest thing for me to get through on TV. It's like it's can't watch. It's turn off the TV and watch something else and wait till it comes on to YouTube TV later so I can fast forward through the parts I don't want to see. He is really bad. And every time I try to give it a chance, it's worse. Uh, Splinter Fox says Champa injury may have affected the story and thinks that the two of them are comedy hour. and it's But it's bad comedy hour. Uh, maybe that's true. The Mustafa Ali shit I did not care about with Miz. Damien Priest for Carl Anderson was fine, but I didn't care. The Rhea Luke Gallows thing was funny. What do you think? So you were going to say something about Judgment Day earlier. What are you thinking about all this Judgment Day stuff? We were back and forth on them last time we talked. Sometimes we liked it, sometimes we didn't. Where are you at with them now? Well, Dom ain't even he ain't even make that jump last time I um. I know. I was here. And now Dom is this generation's Eddie Guerrero. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You know I love it, man. Um. I think they're doing good. You know, I think it was um they was losing a lot of uh a lot of juice until that. You know, I think they was running out of things to do with Judgment Day. And um I, I was like, man, this they might go ahead and disband this group already. Yeah. And then um the whole Dom thing and the, the Dom it seems like it was a rejuvenation yeah. for the Judgment Day. And that whole storyline for them is a whole rejuvenation for them, man. Yeah. Just to see his mannerisms coming out and how much of a, a asshole he is, mm -hmm. really is, and he really is an asshole. It's like, oh, it, it, it just it just fits, man. It just all works. Um, he's he's emulating his uncle. Um, he's saying he's the new Eddie. I mean, this is this is all great, man. This is this is exactly what uh, wrestling needed. So mm -hmm. um, I, I like the uh, Judgment Day thing, especially with Rhea Ripley, man. She's the X Factor, and I I think I said that um, one of the times before I left uh, that she would definitely be a, a huge factor into that group, like yeah. how China was for DX. That's yep. how I've always seen it to be, and that's exactly what she's doing. And yep. then some. And then some. So, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm a huge Rhea Ripley fan right now. She's doing her thing. And just for clarity, the story is that Rhea is pegging Dom, right? <laughs> yeah, or whatever. <laughs> like, she, she's poppy. That's, that's what she said. She's, she's definitely Poppy, and she's definitely pegging dumb. Turner Fox does say that uh, that's what he does with all US TV now. He doesn't watch it live. He just fast-forwards to parts he wants to see. He does say Rhea's the only thing that keeps that Judgment Day alive. I think she's definitely the most fascinating thing about it. Um, and he says, Mother Rhea, clap, clap, Mother Rhea. You know, Mother Rhea. <laughs> to Survivor Series, Dom needs to be on Raw and Ray on SmackDown teams. That storyline needed to be continued. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll see. It sounds like they're doing a War Games thing. I don't, I don't know if we're going to do Raw vs. SmackDown anymore. I don't think anymore. it's over with. I, I don't think, Brand... think that storyline is over with. I think it's stalled. Yes. That storyline is stalled. It's not It's not over. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that for sure. Um, And I agree with both sentiments. That I want to see more. I want it to be uh, revisited at some point, but I like the stall. Definitely stall it right now, and let's get back to it later. Um... And then Spider-Fox, so I think they're like building Dom more for that to happen. I agree, too. Yeah, dude, I think what they're doing so with Dom like is awesome. Yep. Dom may be 
And it's gonna piss Dom off versus Fox, Ray. I don't even care. And you know what they should do? And now that I'm, I'm glad I'm on air to say this though. Yeah, what fair. they should do, because. I think they should do it for the WrestleMania. Save it all for WrestleMania. Say like uh, Dom, uh, he he eliminates Ray from Royal Rumble. He yeah. gets him eliminated, and he keeps on bothering Ray. And Ray just says, "You know what? I can't take it no more." He finally says, "Okay, son, I'm gonna fight you at WrestleMania, right?" Yeah. And then Dom says, "Okay, we fight at WrestleMania, but I win." I get your mask. Yep. I get your mask. If you win, I come home. Yep. Let's go, man. Let's yeah, go. I think you do it. And what a heel thing to take Rey Mysterio's mask and come out there and call himself Dom Mysterio. What? Yeah. Come on, man. Or if he just comes out WWE. as Rey Mysterio. Because that's I'm the whole waiting. thing, right? There was a Rey Mysterio before Rey. Hire me. (laughs) That's why he was Rey Mysterio Jr. for a while in WCW. He was the second Rey Mysterio, right? So that would make Dom the third. So I think absolutely you could take the mask, have him wear it, have himself called Rey Mysterio the third or some shit. Like, piss people off. I think Dom is, non-ironically, one of the greatest heels in wrestling in this very moment. He gets the most booze out of anyone. Yes, he does. He... As much as I like MJF, MJF gets cheered and has to beg people to boo him. Dom, and that's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing right there. And I'm sorry to cut you off. Go ahead. Right there. He lobbies for it. He lobbies for you to boo him. He sits there and talk about your, your favorite team. He sits there and talk about the, the home crowd and then all this stuff. Dom don't have to do none of that. None of that. Dom don't say none of that. He don't have to go at the home team. Uh, the home crowd team he don't have to sit there and say oh you fat lazy mu-. none of that nope. none of that yep and, and he, he gets still... the loudest booze as soon as he grabs the mic he'll go hand, the, hand him the mic and it just the rumble of booing starts Whoa. it's amazing it's amazing uh, Spinner Fox says, not the mask, just retire him, put it in the Hell in a Cell match, WrestleMania, do it. He goes, Dark Mysterio with the mask like Tiger Mask. Dude, I'm saying doing all of it. Do a Hell in a Cell match with his dad. Take the mask, call yourself Rey Mysterio the Third. Be amazing. That's the, that's uh, the next level for him, man. That's yep. the next level. Spinner Fox says, wait, Marsh likes an AEW wrestler. Oh shit, it's going to snow in Arizona tonight. Dude, you know I'm the biggest Thunder Rosa, Mark. She's the women's champion. The AEW women's champion. Currently, right now. None of this interim bullshit. Fuck, push that to rest. Shakes, I think we. I think there was literally nothing else in this show that was worth talking about. Everything else was really bad. I mean, the the pumpkin match was fine. It was funny, but it didn't fucking matter. It was <gasps> static. Props to Corey. Yeah. Seasons greetings, of course. They yeah. always do that. And they had to do it, and it's fine. Yeah. But it didn't matter. It wasn't important, so I didn't pay attention. So forget it. Yeah, uh, and all four people. I'm not even trying to knock them. Otis, Riddle, Gable, uh, uh, Elias, yeah. yeah, are all amazing at what they do. And that segment was funny and entertaining, but none of it mattered. So, in a nah, in a I show that I, already had so intro, much that was throwaway, the intro was the the the, the most entertaining part. Yeah, he was dancing. The Chippendale dancing, <laughs> uh huh. Which is all well and good, but when you're following that up after an R Truth segment with Baron Corbin, which was yeah. followed up before with Rhea low blowing yeah, Luke Gallows, was... which, which also after the pumpkin match, then you had a Johnny Gargano sit down interview. When it's you silly. have so much stuff that's just silly, throwaway, right? like it just became the kind of thing where it's like I don't need to pay attention to this too. Like mm-hmm. there was maybe 20 or 30 minutes worth of worth of show that I was like this is pretty cool the rest of it was all like I didn't need I didn't need any of this and I'm hoping it's strictly because they were all getting ready for Saudi Arabia it was their go home raw before Saudi Arabia mm-hmm. typically the go home shows are more impactful because they want you to watch the the premium live event maybe in this case they're like look phone it in and fuck off we'll just figure it out when we get back there's a lot of traveling to be had, a lot of tensions over there. I get all that. That's fine. But 
this was not a very good raw and I really want damage control to be doing better and I just don't I just don't pee as often as Johnny Gargano's on TV so I just need less Gargano on TV or I need to drink more water to justify that many pee breaks because you know what it also comes down to and this is going to just sound like a petty stupid thing to say but I do buy tickets to go see wrestling events when they come to town if Raw comes to town I have to second guess how much of that show do I want to sit through if I know it's a four hour show because it's three hours plus they film main event then do I want to bother going there to be walking around for an hour and a half of that because Gargano's doing some dumb shit that's a thought I have to make now well I don't have to make it they're not coming to town soon so but eventually <laughs> they're gonna come to town and I have to think about that um let's see she's not AEW women wrestling don't get to wrestle FTK fantasy book how would you bring back Randy Randy Savage dude that's fucked up man you can't bring back Randy Savage um let's wrap it up on that Shakes are you still muted what's going on no I'm here okay Shakes how would you book a return for Randy Orton and we'll wrap up the show there um book a match with Randy Orton coming back or return angle do you, does he come back and attack Riddle? Does he come back and help Riddle? Does he not even interact with yeah. Riddle? Does he show up on SmackDown? No, nah, no, nah, nah, he definitely got to. Yeah, he definitely got to turn on on Riddle. Oh, he got to. He got to come back as a Viper. Yeah, he got to come back as a Viper. Like no more playing around. Like, yeah, I had my fun with you, kid, but it's over. I'm going for a title run, my last title run. That's yeah. that's the Viper we need to see. Or what if he comes back with and and he he's back teaming up with Riddle, but he tells Riddle like, hey, we have a good time. I like you. You're a good kid. I don't even mind you using my moves, but I got to get this title one more time. I need it. I need this title again. And he goes, works with Riddle to get himself to a title shot. Riddle costs him the title shot or the match somehow by trying to help gets caught gets thrown out offsets the flow and then randy fucking takes out riddle and says it was cool until it's not cool man you got in my way i need that and you stop that from happening and then you then you get some orton and riddle matches and then you get back to the title thing afterwards and you even then propel Riddle in the title scene. Riddle gets the title, and now you have Randy knocking on Riddle's door saying, I told you, motherfucker, I was coming for one more. Uh, no, I think really, like, you have to, he has to come back viciously. Right. Like, he can't come back all, all pussyfooted. He has to come back and says, I'm not playing games with nobody. I'm not sitting here with all this RK bro stuff that is dead and over with. I just see that my career is not long. So this is my last little uh, run at it. And I ain't playing around. And he got to go ahead. That should be his first mission is to beat the crap out of Riddle and be the the biggest face on, on wrestling right now. He has what to if, be a, a a fate. I mean, not face, but um, a heel. What if he pulls the? What remember Brock and and Randy at SummerSlam that one year? What if Randy does that? Challenges Riddle to a match, goes out there, elbows him in the head, so he's bleeding so much they just cancel the match. <laughs> he's so fucking sick. Maybe it can work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah maybe it can work. <laughs> All right. Shakes, thanks for giving me some time here today. Hanging, talking, wrestling, shooting the shit, no shaking it down. Shakes, tell fun. people where they can find you, man. Uh, um, on Twitter at Shakes NYG. Um, on YouTube, Shakedown Media Network. Please like and subscribe. Please leave a like and subscribe. Let us hit the algorithm. Um, Shakedown Sports uh, Podcast dot com. It's our website. Um, and any business inquiries, uh, shakes three zero nineteen eighty four at gmail dot com. All right, hit me up for anything, especially if you got money. All right, 
Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's in our description. Thank actually. you. I like it. Thank you. Uh, our description actually keeps your uh, contact information and show information there too. So if you're watching this Thank on YouTube, it's below. If you're listening on podcast, just keep scrolling to the bottom of the description. You'll see it. Um, I do want to give a quick shout out to Corey Graves, uh, Carmela. Uh, our thoughts are with them. Carmela posted recently on Instagram that uh, she underwent some some really tragic stuff, uh, having to do with failed pregnancies a couple of times, and she's taking time right now to take care of that. And knowing that Carmela was in, um, I mean, I mean, I don't know, do we call her Leah because it's personal, or do we say Carmela because we're respectful? I don't know the right answer, but um, she was in the hospital Saturday. And here we have Monday. I come home from work around 7.30. The East Coast show is already most of the way through. So when I come in, the first voice I hear is Corey. And I just went, oh, wow. Like, Corey has a lot of personal stuff going on at home. Couldn't and, believe it. Couldn't believe it. Yeah, and I couldn't believe it. That the first oh, voice I hear is his. In the midst of all of this, and in a community, like the internet wrestling community, that constantly berates him and shits on him and wants to talk bad on him, for his, I don't even want to say priorities, but just for for the, for him to feel it important enough to make it to the show, to give us, the wrestling fans, our escape for three hours, because that's what we've come accustomed to, and that's what we need. For him to give that much to us in an instance where he could have easily stayed home and said, "Look, there's a lot going on here. I need to be for be here for," uh, and no one would have would have blinked at it for him to say no no no, it's important i be here for the fans like he's doing that for us he's not doing that for him knowing full well that he's likely on a plane right now on his way to saudi arabia again leaving his wife alone in the midst of this stuff the idea that carmela is strong enough to handle this the way that she has even when being left alone the idea that they both value our escape of wrestling to the level where she gives him the blessing to go to work and he goes to work and focuses for three hours to give us that entertainment. I just, you know, there's nothing but gratitude and respect that I want to give out to them as a family unit and as entertainers for, uh, giving that back to us. Like that's, that's amazing and, and unnecessary. And, I think that there's a lot of negative things a lot of people say, and I think that it's all bullshit when you think about how much they care to do this in return. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Well said. No. Uh, Outside of that, guys, I'm at Ref Marsh. We are at WOTR The Show. This is episode one. You can follow, like, subscribe, do the notifications. Also go to YouTube.com slash Queen of Carnage to check out Paving the Way podcast with Medusa. we got a bunch of cool stuff coming up. I just recorded with her for two hours talking nothing but wrestling, and that's going to be dropping in bits and segments throughout the next couple of months. Uh, Very cool. So definitely keep an eye out there. Keep your ears there. John Arezzi's Pro Wrestling Spotlight. Same thing, man. I'm producing that show and I'm having a ton of fun. I get to go on and talk with these guys who are legends in the business. You ever heard of the PWI 500 list? Uh-uh. You've never heard of the PWI 500 list? Uh-uh. Oh, the Pro Wrestling Illustrated 500 list. Well, I expect you to say yes, but it was <laughs> created by Bob Smith, the co host with John Arezzi, and to be able to pick the brains of guys like that. Uh, about old school wrestling has been absolutely fascinating. I recently found out there was a tag team called the Undertakers in '89. Oh wow! Yeah, good luck googling that because if you look up the wrestling Undertakers and Undertakers tag team, guess what you find? Undertaker. Fucking the Undertaker and Kane. <laughs> That's right. So they were able to enlighten me on who these guys were, other monikers, how much they sold the name The Undertaker to the WWE for. So stuff like that is all there, and it's really fucking cool and really fun. Uh, Spinner Fox says she just started streaming. You should raid her stream. That's a really good point, Spinner Fox. Medusa did start uh, streaming right now, uh, but I'm going through StreamYard, and I'm not really sure how I pivot a raid through Streamlabs. So... um, 
Otherwise, I would send them. But but I will say this. Anyone who is watching live, that's one of the perks. Hey, switch on over to Medusa Rocks right now and see her play some scary video games, which I'm sure she's doing. Uh, but everyone on podcast, thank you for listening here, liking, subscribing. Find Shakes NYG. I'm at Ref Marsh. We're at WOTR the show. This has been an episode one right here in the dive bar of the IWC. Oh, that's the last call. Shit. Yeah. Hey, producer lady here. Thanks for tuning in. Continue to support us or buy us a drink by following and putting the I and subscribe on Twitch. Or subscribe and review our podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to us. Cheers. I would never have a drink with wrestling on the rock.